Okay, the questions that are attached to these are pretty easy, right? Magnitude 8 is, magnitude 8 earthquake is how many times as intense as a magnitude 7? 10 times as intense, right? A magnitude 7 is how many times as intense as a magnitude 3? Yeah, 10,000, right? 10 to the 4th or 10,000 times as intense. Well, if we're comparing it backwards here, 4 compared to 6 is like 1 one-hundredth as intense, 0 0.01. Even if the exponents aren't... Uh, even if the exponents aren't whole numbers here, it still works. If you look at the difference between the, the Richter scale numbers, 4.8 and 6.8, the difference between there is 2, right? It, it's, it's 10 to the, the difference between them. 4.8 is 10 to the negative 2. 4.8 minus 6.8 is negative 2, right? That's the difference between those. Just like the difference between 4 and 6 is negative 2, this number is 10 to the negative 2. If you want, you can just do 10 to the power of whatever one magnitude is minus the other, I suppose, right? If you want a formula for the thing. This is still 10 to the negative 2, or 1 100, the same thing. If you want to write it out, I guess, to be common here. The other two I'll leave for you to fill out after you can look at it. If you have numbers that aren't whole numbers apart, it still works. You have here one that says a magnitude 8.1 and a magnitude 6.9. If it was 7.1 and 8.1, what would the difference be? It would be, then it would be 10 times as big, right? It's a little bit more than that. It's larger than 10, right? Larger than 10 to the 1, but smaller than 10 to the 2, right? It's 10 to the 8.1 minus 6.9. Or in other words, it's 10 to the 1.2. The ratio of the earthquakes is equal to that, right? The ratio of the two earthquakes is 10 to the 8.1 minus that. Now, you might have some grade 9 flashbacks here, but this I could write a different way. I could write it as the ratio is 10 to the 8.1 divided by 10 to the 6.9, right? Because in grade 9, you learned that dividing powers was the same as doing what? Subtracting those exponents, right? So you could, you could write it either way. doesn't matter. But if you want to work out what the actual number is, just go to your calculator, and unless you happen to have memorized your table of logarithms, 10 to the power of 1.2, so roughly 15, 16 times if we're doing to the nearest whole number. I'm going to put down 15.84 and then say roughly 16 times. More intense. All right. The key is understanding the scale. The scale is comparing the exponents, not the actual numbers. That's the key here. If you're a kind of person that likes formulas, we can look at how we just set that up. If you're comparing anything here now, because we're going to look at some other situations here. For, for earthquakes, the ratio of the two earthquakes is 10 to the power of, I don't know, magnitude 1 divided by 10 to the power of magnitude 2, whatever they happen to be. Or you can write it as the other way we did it. The ratio is 10 to the m1 oops, minus m2 in the exponent here. So you can either divide those two numbers or subtract the exponents. This is a question for you to think about after. Okay, you're going to have to work backwards and and find some stuff there. You try that after. Uh, we're going to look at the two other situations that are, are examples of logarithmic scales. Uh, the sound, the loudness of sound, the decibel scale, is another example of a logarithmic scale because the amount of actual sound energy 
is is just such hugely different uh, numbers, magnitudes of numbers. We're not actually attaching numbers here, but we're just talking about how many more times uh, different is it. Like you look here, I mean, a leaf rustling generates almost nothing compared to jet engine or all of these things here, right? I don't know how they... I think these are on, anytime they show you the decibel scale, these things is what they put on there. I'm not sure why they pick certain things, but like why they pick a power saw or these things as examples, but um, you can see where they are on there. The only, the only hitch with this is the scale is set up in bells. <laughs> Well, but uh, actually, the scale is set up in decibels, but the comparison, the logarithmic comp uh, aspect of the scale is in bells. Um, Ten decibels equals one bell here. So this is decibels here. 150 decibels is 15 bells. 100 decibels is 10 bells. And so on. If you go from, I guess it would be right here, 90 bells to, sorry, 9 bells to 10 bells, that's 10 times more. Okay, if you go from 9 to 10, if you go from 90 decibels to 100 decibels, it's 10 times more. So there's only one slight difference to how we have this set up up here. The comparison has to be done in bells here. So if we're comparing... 120 decibels to 80 decibels. It's not. It's not 10 to the 40th. In other words, it's not. It's not 10 to the 120 minus 80. It's 10 to the 12 minus 8. You have to divide them by 10 because you have to change them to bells. This is 8 bells and this is 12 bells. The scale was set up in bells, not decibels. One hundred forty five is how much compared to that here? Ten to the fourteen point five minus twelve point five. Ten to the two, right? Hundred times as loud. I don't know what the threshold of pain is. That might be when you that might be when you actually start having permanent ear damage when you listen to the sound or something like that. Who knows? Uh, this, I think, is on the same page on yours. I don't know why it slipped over to the edge here to the next page, but 30 decibels, 60 decibels, 10 to the 3 minus 6, right? You have to convert them. It's not any harder. It's just you have to convert them. I'm going to leave you these questions to do on your own after. And then we're going to look at the pH scale here. <clears throat> 